I'm just waiting for a few people to log in for our Instagram live this morning. Hoping that many are going to join us for the uh, art of consultation. Something that we all struggle with in our careers. And hopefully I'm going to give you some tips or just a few pointers just to help you out in that journey in your career. Um, we've all suffered with clients in the chair and clients you've all suffered with hairdressers. So hopefully we can uh, address a few of those issues in this live this morning and um, yeah, make it a much more enjoyable experience for all. Okay, I'm gonna officially launch this. So welcome to our Unite Live this morning, live from the sunny shores of Carlsbad, California, wherever you are in the world. Um, I can say good morning from here, I can say good afternoon to you, if you're somewhere else, or even good evening, good night, whatever it may be, but thanks for joining us. And today's one, as I said a little bit earlier, before we officially um, tuned in to you all, it's the art of consultation. And by that we mean the consultation between yourself, the stylist, and the client, or if you're the client, the client, and your stylist. And how can we improve that experience and gain a much more enjoyable and professional approach to what we're doing as hairdressers behind the chair. So I'm gonna give you some information that I've garnered over the years, many, many years now, um, and hopefully gonna you know, address all these subjects I'm going to bring in someone live um, because I really want to sort of do this like a one-on-one -on -one, so it's not just me here rambling away to deal with lots of subjects and they're going to give you some very honest answers as well and their experience. They do work for us here, they're a staff member, but I really wanted to show you how I would approach a client in the chair, especially if it was a new client and taking away what I call the white knuckle ride for the young lady in a chair when they you know, almost feel like they're gripping the chair and they're thinking, I hope this is gonna turn out all right. And just all those different methods I will use to hopefully relax them, garner information, and then hopefully we then get the result we set out to in our mind's eye. Because hairdressers, we are very visual. We picture what we wanna finish the hair like at the end very, very quickly. And we want to get there very, very quickly as well. Because our attention span, clients don't know, attention span of hairdressers is very, very short. So we like to sort of get through these things and get them done. Before you get too far into the uh, instruction here, there's a rumor in the comments that uh, the United President is out driving you. So everybody wants to know how the golf game's going. Yeah, um, yeah, fantastic. Uh, the rumor that the, uh, the United President is out driving me, yes, he does drive faster in his car, and that's about the only thing about driving he can talk about. Um, unfortunately, on a golf course, this granddad knocks it past him on a regular basis, and it hurts him very, very much. He thinks, I think he's in a bit of therapy for it. So um, thanks for the early comment. We're going to keep a lot of those going. You can, and um, please, send in questions, anything you like. Um, Pick my brains about anything. As I say, I've been doing hairdressing now for about 300 years. And uh, yeah, anything you want, as I say, it's a live. We're gonna record it, post it back up. So, you know, um, I'll endeavor to answer any of those. So, consultations. We, well, I think it's a valid point to say not over 90% of problems stemming from your client in the chair can go all the way back to the consultation. So I'm going to do a little bit of role play here. I'm going to bring in my special guest, our staff member, Paget, throw her in the chair and do what I call a classic scenario that I've seen hairdressers use over the years in a salon. And I would have probably even done it myself when I was younger, but I can't remember that far back. So, Paget, come in. We've maybe done the introduction, you know, when I met her at the beginning of the salon. Hi, I'm Gary, she's Paget. Take a seat. Classic case, I'm gonna just literally, she jumps in the chair, I throw the cape over her. So great to have you in here this morning. Throw her hair out, okay. What can I do for you today? So I'm looking to be, I think, a little more blonde, but I still wanna keep my length. Um, I do like having the rooted look, um, but I'm also not sure if I should go a little bit darker as well. What do you think? Okay, so there's alarm bells, two big alarm bells ringing for me there. 
first one, I threw the cape over her straight away. Didn't really pay any attention to how she's dressed. So I'm looking at her from a black uniform. I don't know what she does for a living. I don't know what her daily hair routine is like. I don't know if someone else has blow dried this hair. I don't know if she's done it herself. Lots of lots of different questions of routine. So, number one, let's leave the cape alone for this moment while we do the consultation. She may be in a work uniform, she may not, but I still think there's an essence of her personality is in there in her dress. So we wanna look at the person from head to toe, especially if you've got long mirrors in the salon, it's a big advantage. Okay, and another big red flag for me is, hello, what can I do for you today? And by that I mean I'm throwing the onus of everything on the client, for them to expect to know all about hair cutting, colouring, what they want it to look like, finish, products they're going to use in their hair. So I, we move away from that completely. And that is quite off-putting to younger stylists quite on a regular basis. When I t We used to have them work in a salon and say, you cannot say to them, hello, what am I going to do for you today? What would you like? I always use this analogy. We never turn up at a car mechanics and tell them, please replace my clutch, change the oil, check the tyres, I think I've got the big heads going, etc. You don't. You say, I've got a problem with my car, uh, I need it fixed, etc. Because we're not that knowledgeable. But we always allow it as hairdressers, we allow that client to dictate to us, you know, in a horrible way, but we just take that power away from us. All that training that we've done and experience, and we throw it all onto them, if that makes sense. Hello, what, what would you like? So, to break that down straight away, as I say, don't use the cape, put them in the chair and say, okay, Hey, just talk to me about your hair. What do you feel about it at the moment? Um, I like the length of my hair, but I, I'm not sure whether I should go darker or more blonde. I'm not sure what looks good on my skin tone or with a cut, what goes well with my face. Okay, so this is the point. This is, this is where we start our information gathering. She's happy with the length, so I can instantly break down to, okay, let's find out permutations of how would you be happy losing some length, a little length, minimal? You know, are you looking to like a maintenance trim? But also, what's your long-term goal? What does your hair look like in six months? Give me perfect world hair. I always used to throw that one in. I said, in a perfect world, what does your hair look like? And I would get so much more information out of that. So she's reasonably happy with the length, so we can maybe decide, okay, I'm going to take off my inch and i'm going to show her in the mirror what my inch is it's not a hairdresser's inch which is about that long you know we're going to do a proper inch and she should be happy with that so instantly we make her feel a little bit calmer and uh, we'll talk about color in a minute but i'm going to gather information and push her down the avenue that i want to go to as far as cutting the hair is so this looks blow dried paget do you do you blow dry yourself if you had this professionally blow dried wash your hair regime I blow dry it myself and then I use a flat iron to curl it. Okay. Problematic areas when you style it, I mean you've got a lot of hair, I mean do you feel like you're spending too much time styling it? Is it a chore? Would you like to cut down on that? It's a chore. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour. I'd like to cut down on that. I have kind of wavy hair. Okay. Wavy or going to curly? I mean, would you say it's this sort of wave that you have in it artificially or is it stronger? It's, it's stronger than this. Okay. Yes. And I have a lot of curls underneath right here. So those are problem areas by my face and underneath okay. right by my neck. Do you ever wear your hair natural? Sometimes. But I'd like to wear it natural more. Okay. And you don't wear it natural because? It's frizzy. All right. So that's a product. So instantly we've gained it's her hair frizzes because living out here on the coastline, that marine layer comes in, if anyone knows, she takes her dog out for a walk, I'm gonna cut through, give you a little bit more extra information. The marine layer comes in, it can help her frizz a little bit. So, that's her main uh, problematic area. Um, do you find your hair too heavy at the moment? Is it dropping too much? Or are you quite happy with the amount of hair you have to blow dry, etc.? I feel like it's a little heavy right now. Okay. So are you looking to create volume or are you looking to just to decrease the weight in the hair? Decrease the weight in the hair. Okay, so you're quite happy that you know you get sort of more of a, I'd say not harsh, but you're quite happy that you, you like it flatter through here and maybe a bit of width in the sides? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So I'm instantly breaking down, I'm gathering information 
about the haircut that I'm going to do. I can show bits in the mirror, I can take up a section and we can look at that, what was previously done. Um, but a number one thing for that is to never pick the haircut up and the cardinal sin is, oh, who cut this before? Because chances are you may have forgotten, but it might have been you. So you never want to, I don't think it's ever worked to say anything derogatory about previous haircuts, um, especially nowadays, purely because the way haircutting's changed, disconnection, um, is, is such an open area that we can have completely disconnected parts for a particular look. They could have grown out over a period of time. And yes, they may not blend in, but for that specific haircut done originally, they may have worked perfectly. It's just grown out and it's now time to change it. So maintenance wise, Paget, how often do you go to the hairdresser on a, on a, on a regular basis? I would say every four months. Okay, so you, you do string it out a little mm -hmm. bit which is un, you know, it's unusual in California because the heat here makes people's hair grow faster, if you didn't know that, so I want to give her that little bit of information. So generally people who live in a hotter climate will visit the, the uh, hairstylist more than those who live in a colder climate. Um, just out of interest, if we've got anyone listening from Scandinavia, that, that average visit was six times a, a year, and for people who say here in the States, etc., it was roughly eight times a year that they would visit their hairdresser especially if they're coloured and we, we know that you know majority of women have some sort of like uh, colour in the hair. So we're garnering information about this, let's go back to this information we're gathering about the haircut. I think she's starting to feel a bit more comfortable about maybe what I'm going to do and you know how I'm going to achieve that. Maybe we want to add maybe just a little bit of width on your sides. So number one thing, tell me what I definitely can't do regarding the haircut. Um, in your mind's eye it, regarding the haircut yeah. I do not want it pretty much any shorter than what it is okay. I want it to be healthy though yeah. so I want to take off that length um, and I don't want to be too layered like shorter layers I want long layers okay so I can do what I would call like indiscriminate layers that become what I call seamless Okay, so what I explained to her by that, and we've done this before on Paget, which she's more than happy about, actually, if you don't know this, but I gave her what I call seamless layers that allow her to part her hair anywhere and they just blend in and they can be shorter. So if she's overdue for a haircut, we know that, but she's given her the chance to allow to wear her hair curly and straight, which, you know, she will admit uh, she didn't have that option before. Mm -hmm. So that's been quite nice. That was a quite a groundbreaking thing for you, wasn't it? Oh, definitely. When we first did it. Yeah, I can. Uh, you know, and that was me to gathering that sort of information. So as I say, we want to keep this legitimately real um, and give her those options that she could wear it natural or straight. So we solved that problem for her and say she's due for a haircut now. A uh, fringe, talk to me about a fringe. Are you happy for a fringe? Like a little micro fringe? I'm gonna throw one of those in there. No. So definitely not? Definitely not. Okay, so we're, <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm gaining parameters. Okay, I'm narrowing her down. Are you open to maybe a long fringe of some sort? Yes. Possibly. 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 So from the things like that, I'm going to start taking her hair and showing her what that does to a face shape. So maybe I'd want to do change her parting just a little bit. And that can be done with the actual haircut as well. And I can show her what that looks like. And by shifting her parting over a little bit more, and we can look at what a sweeping fringe can do to emphasize cheekbones etc and just by putting my hand in front we can see how that changes her face shape now look if i just want to do this as an example to you all is i want you to concentrate on what you see visually it's like subconsciously when i do this is that your attention now and i'll be talking to Paget the same your attention now is drawn more to her eyes and her cheekbones raise a sharp cheekbone she's got look at that you know really great bone structure through all of this but as soon as I do this it gets drawn away a little bit so looking into that I'll be saying well I think you know maybe a soft fringe sweeping fringe in there would maybe work really well or we just cut down on maybe the amount of space that we see on the forehead so we can just pull that hair in so instantly when I do this you instantly see that cheekbone so as soon as I pull it away it's just, it's just an optical illusion just disappears just a little bit. So understanding face shape as a hairdresser becomes really, really important because your eyes are drawn to the greater area of skin that you have on show. So by doing this, now I could maybe utilize that black cape as well, just as a, a reference so the arms are away. 
you see your eyes are drawn potentially up here to the forehead area, which is quite common. But as soon as I do this and it cuts it down, it draws your eyes down more to the lower part of the face. So I think that's a nice little tip for hairdressers. Now I know Pat is going to come out with a statement if I say to her, okay, we're going to talk about maybe doing hair up as well, etc. at some point. And if I did say that to you, you're going to say to me, um, I think my face looks really round with my hair up and I think I look a little masculine when my hair is up. Okay. That's, 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 I love this one when I get this from clients when they say to me, I've got a really round fat face. I think 99% of women on the planet have always said that to me as a hairdresser. I'm saying, okay, that's fine. And at this point, you know, I've, dropped, I've brought my brush out of my bag, out of my drawer and I'm just going to remove all the hair because I want to do this. This will be great for when we do colour consultation as well. And I'm saying, okay, let's have a look at your face shape legitimately. And if I, even if I had to, we could use a marker pen and we could draw on the mirror what the face shape is. And I could do it through here. It's very, very handy. And I would draw through here. And you can see Paget has not in a million years got a round fat face. Cheekbones, as I said, you could cut your fingers on them. They disappear here right the way up into... The eye socket area which is really important as you can see through here once again this is what is drawing my eye as soon as i cut that down as you can see from that if i said to her, okay what does your face shape look like now it's i guess a little narrower it's <laughs> well yeah so it's not round is it right if i drew it on there it's not round whatsoever so you could almost say it's almost like a heart shape potentially you know because you feel like and that's purely like the you know the, the forehead is like if i drew the line through here it's got the greater area from, you know, if I look at the scale wise from like the chin to up here, way more prominent through here. So you're going to get, you know, an oval, but much more of a prominent oval area through here. It's a sort of semi heart to oval shape, but vastly different. So as a hairdresser, I would instigate throwing the fringe area in at some point. Now, hopefully Paget's got some you know, red carpet events that she would go to, or she might just want to change at some point. And I've got tricks I've got as a hairdresser that I can do, you know, having something in your repertoire where you can create a full fringe, fringe with a hair weft when she's going out somewhere, and just do it for the hell of it. You cut it in, razor it in, give it a, make sure it's nice and long so she can see it, but it's not high risk because it's not her own hair, but I can lose it in her hairstyle. And she can go out one night with that, and then you can see the response from all her friends telling her, oh my God, you look amazing. Instantly it helps your client then think, oh, maybe I should do this. That can help you. Because some clients are always gonna be, I don't mind, do whatever you like. So argument's sake, let's say Paget says, I don't care, do whatever you want. Okay, we get that as hairdressers all the time. We, we have generally four clients that fall into a categories, okay, four types of client. We have the client that we love seeing come into the salon, which is, I don't care, let's do blonde. I'm, you know, and two weeks later, they don't want to be blonde anymore, they want to be bright blue. And two weeks after that, they want to be black. And we love those clients because hairdressers, as I said, our attention span is very short and we love the change that they create. But they also create problems for us because we're trying to look after their hair. But we love the fact that they give us creative um, license to go and do potentially whatever we want. But if she said that and I said, oh great, I'm really in a, into a mood of these complete shaved off heads at the moment with long fringes turn pink and I do that to her and she, and she starts crying well, I said well you could said I could do whatever I want she doesn't mean that in her own world she means I want still want to keep my hair long but I want something slightly different so that is one really important one for those exciting clients who say do whatever you want some literally will and they are great fun but some don't mean that. They've, you've got to start bringing it down. So it would be, okay, what's the shortest I could take your hair? So Paget, just imagine you've come in and you're looking for a lob of some sort today. So that's the, this, that is the key one I want to clear up. What would be the shortest I can cut your hair today? Um, I would say right to the shoulder. Okay, just to the shoulder. So, you know, that's, that to me, that is hovering in that lob environment. You know, and I want to explain to them, okay, if someone asks for a bob, a bob swings clear of the shoulders, okay? In a hairdresser's world, and I really want to clear that up, bobs swing clear of the shoulders. When they get longer than that and they start hitting shoulders, I start classifying them as one length hair if they're not layered. You know, they don't become necessarily a bob when they're on the shoulders. Lobs are what I call them a little longer when they're hovering on the shoulder. 
So I just I would want to clear that up in my head because my vision is slightly different to hers. So once again, parameters coming down. And this is going to be really important when we talk about colour as well. Um, have we got any questions coming in yet, Mike? Nothing yet. Why don't we just invite them to ask some questions if they have anything at this point? Yeah, please. I'd, I'd love to hear from people to give me an example of what they have trouble, maybe with clients, um, convincing them, etc. But hopefully you're garnering enough information with this that's going to help you on that journey. So one, one important thing there we'll go over. So we're finding out our limitations and her limitations as well. Really, really important about the haircut. So let's find out what I can do, the shortest area that I can cut to, the shortest point she wants her layers. And then once I've got that, okay, we're gonna do a nice long lob, slightly layered because she wants a little bit of width in her sides. And we may be doing, you know, a little cut across fringe just through here, just to make the hair slide across the face so she's not losing length. So she's got that nice little piece that maybe falls out when she's in a bar because we all know young women with long hair, they're always doing this all day, okay? You, she does look, and this is an important one, okay? Always, I've always wanted to see this with my client. As soon as I said that, what did Paget do? Did anyone see that? Could you tell me? It's all right, I'm gonna answer it for you anyway. She did this, okay? I've got Paget doing a lot of this, all right? She's doing a lot of yes, yes, yes. She's not doing a lot of that. All right, so what I've done there is that she's now buying into me and she believes me as a hairdresser that maybe I do actually know what I'm talking about or I'm giving her useful information. Another little snippet I want to give you as well, especially as a man, I've found this over the years, is that I sometimes can be a little too intimidating behind the chair, standing above the woman, etc., looking over the top of them. I have to come down to eye level so just having a stall talking to my client down here it doesn't become so imposing and i think that's a slightly nicer way of dealing with the client once again paget's nodding her head she agrees agrees with that and i might actually move around to the side of her instead of looking in the mirror and doing that as well so I, because some people don't like looking in the mirror um so they don't want to necessarily be in the chair and look at themselves for two hours some people love it but that's quite a good way to actually find out because if they're averting their eyes a lot around the salon when they're doing this like, okay they're a little bit uncomfortable so understanding body language um, becomes really important maybe if they're sitting there initially with crossed arms at some point i want to maybe relax them crossed arms cross legs means they're maybe a little bit apprehensive not necessarily so but maybe so i want to try and make sure that they open up slightly um, and relax and they may want to play around with their hair and then they start giving me more information so that little bit about, oh, you know, you're always tucking your hair behind your ears. So you're forcing weight behind your ear. So you may, so if I'm cutting the hair shorter, I might want to explain to them, well, if you're doing that all the time, you're always feeling like your hair's bunching up in the back behind your ear. And that can maybe, it may be problematic, it may not. But we'll also talk about balance and the haircut. And I would maybe go down a technical side of the haircut, but not too much. I don't expect a client to know about graduation, over direction, into out layering processes etc i don't expect them to know about that so i've got to use a common language when we talk about that and a common one for us is clients they will say oh, i want to see texture in my hair and that's a big one and before we know it we've gone into it with our scissors and we're chopping away like crazy and the hair as we've, we've if we haven't consulted paget before her hair is naturally wavy she goes out to the beach area by point cutting it like crazy the chances are it's then going to explode and look frizzy because the haircut may have done that by, t by texture, she may be talking about the finish. So I'd want to clear that up and say, okay, Paget, talk to me about your hair regime. What are you using shampoo, conditioner wise, and styling most importantly to finish your hair? And then we would go through the consultation process of, okay, I'm gonna prep your hair with this today. Seven seconds leaving, obviously. I'm gonna style it with our blowout cream because it's got a great dehumectant. And I'm just gonna leave those on the side in front of her because I want her to be curious because maybe I'm coloring her hair and they're gonna be there then for quite a while, but I wanna hit these, what I call early doors, just to introduce them to her. So I'm not doing like a hard sell. I wanna just give her that information because I've, I've had um, models, clients in here and they have opened up to me and they've said, oh, I've never actually been told by the hairdresser what they're using on my hair which, and they've been going to them for like 10 years, which I found was incredible. So I'm not saying, you know, every hairdresser does that, but it's just incredible that you have a client that's never been told what what's going on the hair and why. 
And I said to her, I'm just going to use this great um, hairspray, you know, a new La Play, to, to finish it at the ends, just to, you know, to fight any frizz, a little bit of hole, but it's brushable, workable, and I'm going to leave all those out in front. Yeah, we've got a couple questions. Fantastic. That are very relevant to this topic. So the first one is, on a new client, how much of the information you're describing would you maybe try to get done before the client comes in for the first visit? Any pre-questions that you would do? Um, that's a hard one to say purely because unless you're going into the realms of you know a Zoom call, um, the question was how much information am I getting before that client comes in? So if I'm doing color especially, which a lot of people have, if they come into the salon, hopefully we're gonna do a skin test. Um, I'm gonna definitely, if I've got time, it's gonna hit them then. Now also, the, the one for me as well is um, if they're a recommendation, they've walked in off the street, and finding out where they've come from. They may have looked at my Instagram profile, so there's a key in that, because depending on what my profile looks like, um, they may have messaged me on there, so I can ask a few questions on that, but not a great amount, because I want that experience to be hands-on in the chair. I don't feel I can gather a lot of information over messages too much. Me, personally, I want them in that chair, because I know that's where I do my best work, and then I can talk to them personally on a one-to-one. -one. That's how I work personally. Some people may be different. Um, if they're a recommendation from a friend, chances are they've been asking that friend all the time, oh, where do you get your hair coloured? I really love it. You know, the classic, oh, I feel like I'm missing out on something that they look better than mine. So I already know to a certain extent, oh, you've been recommended by Tracy. Great. I know what Tracy's hair looks like and what maybe is it close to what Paget's wants, etc. So I'm already gathering sort of subconscious information. Um, and little things like I'm going to go into colour and then it's especially... We've gathered that, but not too much. I, I find it's better for me personally. Once I'm in the chair, I get more. And I will carry on that, especially I'm doing color, while I'm working on the color as well. So the next question is, uh, what do you say to a new client that wants the impossible? Like a color <laughs> that would take numerous visits, that kind of a thing. Yeah, I'm just really honest with them. So argument's sake, Paget's black. She wants to go blonde. My, my favorite one for this is yes, um, I could do your hair today for you, no problem but I don't know what it's going to look like. I've got no guarantee on that. I don't know what the condition's going to be. If you want to see someone else to do that, be fine. But me personally, as my professional judgment is, I'm going to do a hair test. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a small snippet of your hair and I'm going to color it and I want you to come back either later on today or tomorrow and I'll show you what that hair test has garnered. Chances are, if we know it's black and want to go blonde, it's going to be orange, orange, blorange, brown orange at some point without sacrificing the hair. And we can do that strand test. We can show them elasticity and that way that we've then garnered really what the reality of it is. And that's, that was one of those questions is, okay, you know, give me that idea of what does your hair look like in a perfect world? What does it maybe look like in six months? Where are we going on with this? Is it a maintenance thing, etc.? But the, the important one of someone who wants the impossible is once again is, you as a professional, you've got to be okay with saying, no, I can't do that at some point in your career. Okay, at the beginning of your career, you want to please everybody. But you must remember, you cannot do that. I can give you the most perfect haircut in my eyes, the most perfect colour in my eyes, but they just like the way Tracy, who works next to me, does it more. And that's fine. But one of Tracy's clients might have heard me do this consultation and thinks, I want my hairdresser to do that consultation on me. It's a two-way street. You cannot do every person's hair on the planet. And you've got, to be, um, you've got to be comfortable with that. You maybe want to do hair a certain way, which is absolutely fine. It's an artistic profession. So in your own mind's eye, you've got to think, okay, I, I could turn you blonde, but it's going to take me four visits. Someone else might have told you they can do it today. Fine. Let them have a go at doing it. They may know more than me. But myself personally, I feel comfortable the most doing this in four visits, three to four visits, in a gradual process to get you there. Because colouring is normally the one where the impossibility stakes are. And then also explaining to them, perhaps personally, okay, you've shown me a picture here, I just want to show you there could be filters on this, etc., and all things like that. But I'm going to talk colour a little bit, you know, separately anyway, before we go into colour and products. So hopefully that's given you some advice. But believe in yourself and believe in this consultation process, you will then eradicate those that necessarily ask for the impossible because if you know it's the impossible, then you're okay with that. You can say, well, okay, as a hairdresser, you may not like cutting short hair. And there's nothing wrong with saying, well, I think you should go over and see Peter. He's our cutting specialist in the salon. Um, you know, he does great haircuts. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever.
There's one other question. Uh, I know you said you're gonna get into color here, but what questions would you ask to help determine the fitting color for your client? Okay, this is great. I'm gonna start on this straight away because it's always gonna be a huge subject. Um, I've got, the, got Paget in for a color now. Same thing again. I'm not gonna to say to her, okay, what can I do for you today? I'll be asking her the number one question. Okay, what color do you see in the mirror? Not one of those is what I want to hear. I want to see what her eyes, I want to hear what her eyes see in the mirror. Because she could be a client, and we've all had these, I trust, um, where they were like, I think it's so yellow, it's bright yellow. It's like, a, it's like um, a sunflower. And it could be the iciest blonde you've ever done in your career, but they're screaming it's yellow. And we do a brunette, and it's under a certain light in the salon. And they're like, all I can see is red. Well, we know that browns contain red as an undercoat. So in certain lighting conditions, that may just shine through a little bit. So I want to find out what they see in the mirror or hear what they see in the mirror as the colour. It's really, to me, that's really important. And I don't get out a shade guide because I will then have a client say, oh, I'll have that one, that one, and I want to see that one. So they want to go from shade 10 to 3 to 6 all on the same head. And that can, that, you know, I'll, I'll have like a base tone, which is kind of a blonde, which is going to make the hair green. Oh, and I have that deep purple, you know, which they don't know is a deep violet. And that's going to bleed out on the blonde and be a different colour to what their base tone is. Then I'm going to have a little bit of, uh, you know, copper over there once again. So I don't show my shade guides. I will talk to them in colours. I want to see here what their tone is. It's like, OK, do you want to be like, um, you know, autumnal tones? Do you want to be like, uh, you know, a biscuit sandy colour? Or do you want to be like a vanilla blonde? And I find they understand that. A little bit more so if I said to her you know Paget, oh you know I want to make you an icier blonde because I see that your base color is what I call an ash gold and what I mean by that is that you throw out some gold from a technical standpoint but you're predominantly an ashier tone which goes with your skin tone so it doesn't make your face look tones look too red and I'll keep you in the cool area she over experienced time because you live with hair her whole life she would probably air to be like once again she's like you know Oh, I'm going to turn your bright copper, you'd be thinking, no, no, no. So once again, it's those permutations of what can't I do? What's your limitations? How blonde do you want to be? Now, this is my trick for when I'm doing block colours, especially. This is a great visual. It won't be so much on pagets, but so if we've got a severe parting in there, it's working down the middle, and I'll say, okay, what colour are you? And she's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm blonde with some roots. I'm like, okay, what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to place my hand over a parting. Now, if you've got a block colour or a heavily coloured blonde, traditionally then all I'm going to see is blonde all the way through here. Luckily enough, we've got nice tones in Paget's hair because, you know, it'd be dreadful if I hadn't done that over in the last nine months. So I do that and I'll be saying, OK, if I got rid of all your roots, what colour do I see here? And then once I've done that, we can always be determined of what that colour is all through here. Do I need to tone it more? Do I need to add some depth in there? Because that's a great visual, because if you just go straight in, start doing highlights and not really take, pay much attention to the ends, you're making these blonder. These don't look quite as blonde. So that's a classic hairdresser mistake. It's easy with balayage, but sometimes with foils, especially this type, is I've often seen the hair's blonder here in the root base and it's darker on the ends almost. It's because that's like this worn in blonde. Never gonna happen in a real world. I always thought my trick, especially you find out if the, um, the lady has a young child, with young daughters it's perfect. They've been on to the beach all summer. Say to them, I want to make your hair look like your daughter's because the daughter's hair will be stunning. It will be in like the most perfect balayage with it because they've been to the beach, they would have beautiful blonde bits, caramel tones, etc. And it's just very youthful looking. So once I've done that, I will often then pull all the hair back to address root colour then so there you go I just eradicate all the blonde maybe she might not find it very flattering but I want to see what her real root base is like when I get rid of all the blonde I can then talk base tones with her then and then I'll bring it all the way back in and then we can address the whole lot so that's how I garner information with my colour it's with that trick of just like let's get rid of those roots from up here on a parting because sometimes clients all they do is look at is like oh I'm really dark and they're just looking at that root base they don't really look at the ends well, you're not really dark, you're only darker in your roots there. You're not that dark through here. So hopefully that answers that little question a little bit. Hopefully we've got loads of hearts fly up on that mic. And um, 
people are enjoying it. Yeah, everybody's loving it. Guys, keep the questions coming. I'll interrupt Gary throughout the instruction and uh, get those questions over to him. So that, that's my you know, keys for the colour consultation. I really want to understand what they see in the mirror. Very, very important because we all see something slightly different. And then, you know, is it for today? Is it a progression? Um, and also give them a heads up. Okay, this might take me five hours to do this colour today and it's going to cost you X amount. All right, you may have had a brief consultation on the phone and this is a key one I find, especially when colours are concerned. They were quoted on the phone. Oh, what do you charge? for you know root touch up and a haircut oh we charge you know 175 220 whatever it may be they've come in take her to the client to the desk thanks Paige. it's great seeing you today remember i'm chock a block you know i'm full up all the time so please rebook because it's really important you must if you want to see me in you know four months time because i'm booked for six months ahead but i'll fit you in i'll make sure i've got space for you um i'll see you then by the way thanks for that and the bill's 475 she at this point is having a heart attack, she's taking a deep gulp and she's thinking oh well that's two of my evenings out with my friends this month gone down the drain. It's very important because women are great at budgeting, far more than men are, about what they're going to do for the whole month. And that's a little secret for you guys out there if you don't know that, women will budget for the month, oh it's hair month, so I'm doing hair and I'm going to stop going out that, that week because it's hair week. Is that true, Paget? Very true. It's very true. <laughs> yes. So I found that out years ago. So I put that into the equation. It's really important to give them a heads up. You go into that consultation as well. Tell them, okay, this is what I'm going to do. It's not going to be that price maybe you were quoted. I think it's really important. So once again, problems go back to that initial consultation. The haircut, colour, price of it all, etc. And also, you know, if I'm doing the colour, the products are there. She'll be asking me about them. No doubt she's going to be curious, you know, how much are these products cost? So I can lay that in and who knows, you know, if I'm, if I'm uh, what do I say, work for myself behind the chair, we used to call it self-employed in the UK, I might be really nice and say, well, I'm going to throw in the seven seconds today, take a hit on that myself because I want to introduce to you this product line. I believe in it. Um, it's great. It's going to make your hair feel great. Um, and I just want to make sure you go home with this. Maybe not everyone has to do that. You could say to them, okay, I'm gonna, they might ask you, if I had to take one of these away, which one do you recommend? And it's just more important sometimes to introduce that, you know, that great product to them. Ideally, I'll be telling them, you know, we work in a system, just like you do with your face, you cleanse, moisturize, tone, etc. We work in a system on your hair. You know, I really wanna make sure you do this. Some hairdressers I know are very, very strong. If I'm doing your hair, you're walking home with these three. There's no two ways about it. They're very, very good at that. Some clients can't buy into that. Some hairdressers are not that confident about doing that. But at least make sure you introduce it. That's better than never talking about it at all. And then you're going to tell them, you know, the what, why, and how. I think it's really important we do that through our education. You should do the whole thing even when you're dealing with a client. What I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, why I'm doing it. It's very important that they get all that knowledge in there and they start feeling a little bit more comfortable. Any more questions there, Mike? Nothing yet, 20 okay. minutes to go. Fantastic. So we've gone through the majority of the conversation. We've garnered a lot of information. We've pushed her down an alleyway and we're now comfortable with colour, haircut, etc. And we should be on a, you know, a high success rate. So let's just say Paget is now going to um, a red carpet event or a wedding. Or she may even be the bride. And I love throwing this one out there, you know. Runaway bride. She hasn't run away from that many. <laughs> it's only six this year. Even in lockdown, she's, gone, she's on a low rate. Um, I said to her before we came on air, I said I really want to do this, talking about doing red carpet hair as well, because I think it's a very important part of the, uh, the process. A lot of hairdressers sort of like get a bit nervous. They have one or two looks, and they generally stick to those. But I think this is really important. I used to do this with brides a heck of a lot. It's just like, it's like cutting hair without scissors. Um, it just shows you another shows another side of your skill set to them as a hairdresser and from a business standpoint you will garner a huge amount of clients by doing this so argument's sake she's coming in she's getting married so she's got the red carpet event and she says to me okay um, I want to know what the dress is like Vas massively important doesn't matter if it's a bridal dress or an evening dress tell me what your dress is like so I want to get into that conversation. Let's, let's throw it out there. We're going to do real time. And I'm going to be really interested at this point. I'm going to sit down. 
Come on, Paget, what are you wearing tonight? So um, it's lace sleeves all the way to the wrist. And in the back, it's a pretty open back okay. with a V um, and buttons all the way down. Yep. And it's a sweetheart in the front. Sweetheart neckline. Yes. Ooh, like that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a plunge there. But sleeves, they cap in the shoulder or not? Yes, right at the shoulder. She must have this dress because the detail is crazy. She's got it in mind obviously where she's going out at some point. So that's great information. So, you know, she's probably, I already know this answer anyway, so I think you probably want to wear your hair down, don't you? Yes. Yes, because? I always wear it down. Because? I look feminine, more feminine when I wear it down. Okay. So what, why, why would you never wear it up? Because I feel like I look a little masculine with my hair up. Okay, um, and you had a fat face, apparently. Uh, yes, fat face. Yeah, she had a fat face. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, all right, well then, you know, I'll give her, maybe this is a concert, if it's a, what I call a dry run for the bride, very important, I maybe do the first version of what they want. But then, because I've done the prep, I will then go into it and say, okay, but I want to give you two or three versions other than that. I want to show you what maybe, because it's low risk, there's no haircut involved, they're not losing their hair. I'm going to pull the hair up, just at the sides, back a little bit. And I'm going to play around with it. And because we've already put that sweeping fringe in, twisting pieces over, making sure she still knows she has hair. But I'll be like, would you be open maybe to like a half up, half down? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Purely because argument's sake i really want to know i'm going to make sure i know this on the day especially for a wedding really important okay Paige, i know you know you want to wear it all down but you know the weather tonight is really windy it's been windy all day mm -hmm. so you know no matter what i do when i put it down your hair's going to be like that at some point it's going to be blown forward it's going to be there. we've got we've got 30 mile an hour winds tonight so it's going to be out here and stuck in my lip gloss it's definitely lip gloss stuck in you you know your eyelashes yeah because you've got amazing you know natural eyelashes obviously They've never been extended or anything like that. So it's gonna, you know, you'll have bits everywhere, but I could control a lot of that just by tastefully pulling some pieces up around and making this, you know, just soften that because it will look really, really feminine. I assume really important because she said she felt masculine. I can have some real great feminine pieces put down, but because the nature of the dress is that I'm gonna do it in a heart shape. So it actually emphasizes the back of your dress. It follows the flow of your dress through here and also and this is one really important is that okay let's pull your hair down i'm going to wear your hair down through here and i'm going to pull it back that side really really sharp it's like okay even a half up over to one side could look really great because it just it really accentuates look the harsher i pull that up where can you see your cheekbone the most on that side, we pulled it away from your face. So you definitely don't see a round face through here. If I cut that wonderful little sweeping fringe in through here as well, I can actually pull that across through here. Add some height through that part, maybe pull some of that out and then just let some of that down. So she's got the feeling that she still has long hair, but nowhere near as much, but then accentuates in the back. But really important as well, I'm gonna lose that cape just initially because I want to show her because I say if I pull your hair up through here here we go just loosen it where it just casually falls out look at this this is great very very French very what I call boudoir hair we all love a bit of boudoir hair and I'm going to throw her hair to the side a little bit and that's the feel I want to show her I see I'm going to say look Paget you've got a great neckline but when I do this I don't see any of it Okay, this looks ultra feminine, really accentuates the line of the dress. You know, a little bit of volume through here, a little bit of this cascading out, and it can look really feminine. And then a really important one, are you wearing any jewelry? Big earrings or a necklace? A necklace, okay. but a very simple necklace. Very simple necklace, but any earrings at all? Um, diamond studs. Diamond studs. So I want to see those, maybe I want to see them a little bit. What's the point of wearing them if you're never going to see them? You know, there's just, there's no suggestion. So I'm going to draw attention to that, draw attention to the necklace. So what I'm working on, and I think it's really important, just going back to all the way back to the beginning, when she, before she sat in the chair, is that I'm going for an overall look. 
and I've learned that from working with bridal designers and working at Fashion Week as well, is that the hair complements everything that she's wearing, makeup included, because I'm not putting her in a hair competition. You know, I'm not trying to be the superstar. This is, shouldn't be the clown and glory. It should complement her from head to foot. And I think that's really important that we understand that as hairdressers, that it com completes a, an overall look. And that's what I'm trying to convey to her. And I would say that as well, part of my consultation, that is that I want it to work from head to foot because once I'm done, I'm gonna throw a little pin in through here as well. Especially when I finish putting hair up as well, I get the client to stand up. Now, why would I do that? And especially, I wanna have a look at what it looks like from distance, especially when they're standing out of the chair. I wanna see the silhouette they create when they're standing up, and especially with the dress. And I think if you convey information like that, once again, they're gonna be buying into you a little bit more. And I think there's something that's a little bit different consultation wise as opposed to saying, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw it up in a little bun back here and a few little twists. And that's my number two hairstyle that I do for putting hair up. But I wanna give her plenty of options. And because the, once again, if you come and do one of, you know, fashion week with us, you'll see how to prep long hair so well that when we let it down, I mean, look how great that looks already. And I've just been playing around with it. It's got feminine vibe to it. It already looks ruchy and that, bijou, marvelous. We then can, we'll give her all those options, different hairstyles, etc. You let it down and it looks like freshly beautiful blow dried hair. It doesn't look like you haven't got to go and wash it again. Very, very important. So understanding your consultation, the prep, using the correct products, massively important. Um, and then we've, we work with our clients and they, they have a much more enjoyable experience and it's a, it's a great way of attacking. So let's go back, we were in the chair, we had the client for a long time, let's delve into the most important one as well of today, um, product usage as well. Um, it's part of the consultation and I like to believe it is very similar to that mechanic theory as well, or when you go they're going to makeup stores. Skin's a bit oily, it's a bit, um, combination skin, very shiny nose, but I'm very dry cheeks. That's what you're gonna give to the beautician, makeup artist, etc. when you walk into a store. You wanna be recommended what you're gonna use. Very important. Argument's sake, you may do that when you come into the hair salon. Be like, oh, well, this is what I like to do with the hair, my hair frizzes, I need something to combat that. And you may say to me, you use XYZ from a company. You may be a new client to me. So my way of dealing with this as a, as, a, as a hairdresser would be, okay, um, I'm not familiar with that brand as opposed to really going into a minefield of talking about experiences with that. Even if I've worked with it before, I'd be like, I'm just, I'm not familiar with it. But tell me what you want the product to do. I find that's just, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me, all right, I, want, I need a product desperately, what do you want that product to do? I want it to reduce frizz for a long time. I, I... I wash my hair probably every four days, so I need for it to hold up when I'm on the beach or working out, okay. and no frizz. How often do you work in out? Uh, four times a week. Okay. Excellent, good for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, by that information gathering once again, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna recommend, and this does X, Y, Z. Okay, so that's just one of my keys for coming into and recommending that system that we have for the products. And by just that fail safe of saying I'm not familiar with that brand, etc., I'm more result driven. Because it doesn't really matter, I don't really mind what they've been using before. I want to introduce them as like, okay, I understand that. But this is what we use in this salon. Um, argument's sake, you know, the seven seconds blowout from Unite is amazing. It's got a dehumectant in there that, as I found in this environment, has been amazing for longevity. It has what I call a slight brushed cotton fabric to the hair, so you have a nice hold to it. Very, very easy to use, distribute through the hair, and you just blow dry it in. You put it in the hair once you've like, you shampooed your hair, towel dried it, just block the hair, don't rub it. It's very important with blondes, you don't, or any type of hair, don't ever rub it in the hair. I just want you to block this. I tell all my clients, just block your hair, seven seconds, comb through, then apply your product. And I'm gonna show her how I use it, how I'm gonna show exactly how much I use, and then especially like the brush work, and I know, I know people with a lot of hair, okay, I know you're gonna go home, you're gonna tip your head upside down, you're gonna blast most of the water out of it, and then you're gonna do visually what you see or what you can manage, that front piece and the sides and maybe do a little bit of attention in the back. That probably correct? 
That's right. There you go. Yeah. Little secrets coming out there. You got, it's really important to find out what they do at home. I've seen my daughter do it. When she tried to dry her own hair, they just do it upside down, blast it. They want to spend a bit more time on the outside and get the gratification. Okay, but a little extra thing I may be using, the glossy spray. I'm going to use a bit of hairspray just to hold your hair. But it's going to be brushable, but it's also going to help you with that frizz element in there as well. If that's your number one key. So there's no, there's been no hard sell in that. It's been a, an information gathering. It's like, I'm going to use this and this is why, and this is how I use it. So that what, why, and how again, um, very, very important. And of course, you can always recommend that the client watch unitehair.com. You get all the products on there and you get a nice little video of how a, an actual client would use them at home as well. So nice little bonus. So very important how you introduce that product to them. Not a case of like, you know, use this, take it home, thanks very much. I really want to make sure you understand all of it and how I'm going to use it. But it's that information of like, I want to know the effect you want to achieve. And once again, just, I might want a little bit of texture in there. Texture might not be a haircut, it might be actually how the hair looks, that it might be sort of more of a disheveled look or PC. Once again, I've hit those keywords. Paget's nodding her head. She's done that subconsciously. I didn't prompt her. There's no cattle prod in her back making sure that she nods for me. It's just those little tricks that I've gathered over the years that I make sure that if what she identifies with them as opposed to me using hairdresser language. So there's my key takeaways for the consultation. I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, we've got a few little other bits of information I want to give you. There's a little bit of exciting stuff. I'm going to Fashion Week next week in New York. We're taking a great team up there. Once again, um, I want to make sure that everyone knows. Follow us here on Instagram. There's going to be coming live um, from New York on a daily basis. We're going to show you doing the hair test. We're going to show you behind the scenes at the shows. It's going to be a great content for hairdressers, but also, I think, for clients, etc., to, to actually tune in and really see how we use these products backstage professionally. I think that's a real key important of maybe how they're used differently. And um, I think it's going to be a real eye-opener for some people. So the next live is going to be a sneak peek from Fashion Week, and that's going to be on Thursday, the September the 9th, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern Coast, and that will be 8 or 9 p.m. in Europe. Australia, I have no idea what that time is, but call it a 24-hour clock. Um, future lives, add them to your calendar by going to unitehair.com and click on Unite TV tab. Um, this live, actually, if you want to know, is being recorded and will be posted onto Unite TV under the live replay tab in high quality format. Mike, our cameraman, does everything in high quality. I need to take him everywhere. He makes me look 20 years younger. If you have any questions on today's live or anything about Unite TV, please email unitetv at unitehair.com and make sure you follow us on Instagram at unite underscore hair TV. Once again, it's been a pleasure. Myself, Gary Baker, Creative Director of Unite, seeing you on this live. See you next time.